and saluting our wonderful God with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank Jeff Dave for allowing us. Thanks for being here. At this point in time, we'd like to have Reverend Miller come up and give us a few more questions, please. God of peace and God of power. We pray for those who have served our nation and who have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought, whose spirits and bodies are scarred by war, whose nights are haunted by memories too painful for light of day. We pray for those who serve us now especially for those in harm's way. Shield them, we pray. Shield them from danger and bring them home. Turn the hearts and minds of our leaders and our enemies to the work of justice and a harvest of peace. Let the peace you left us, the peace you gave us, be the peace that sustains and the peace that saves us. God of power, hear us. God of peace, save us. Amen. Amen. Now back to Mr. Downs for the small inductions. Well, first, some of them has made Lincoln Park a priority today. And as such, though, she's going to rush off and uh, go down to do one. So we appreciate uh, Congresswoman Debbie Nickel being here today. Uh, we know that she has a commitment in Dearborn uh, very shortly. So Debbie, if you can come up and, and say a few words, we appreciate the everybody. Veterans Day, it's very important to me to be in Lincoln Park. I love Lincoln Park. You know, you and Dearborn always have your veteran ceremonies at the exact same time. So I, I just haven't gotten the art of being in two places down at the same time. You've got the same problem. Lincoln Park means a lot to me, but Veterans Day is probably one of the most important days of the year to me. And it makes me think of John. John was my love, my life. And he had many titles. He was congressman, he was an outdoorsman, he was a friend, neighbor, spouse. But the title that meant the most to him, that he held to his heart and shaped his life, was that of being veteran. And I probably didn't appreciate him on Veterans Day as much as I did until I no longer had him. So I, I take the, he loved you guys. And uh, I take the responsibility he gave to me, and it was one of the last things he said to me, was you take care of my veterans. And I try hard to do that. And there, you sir, you, I, I, I look at World War II veterans, to which we are blessed to have a few left. John was one. And you never talked about what happened during those days. We sure knew what you were fighting for. Koreans, my generation's the Vietnam generation. I want to talk about that in a little. And we can go through all the wars. And the most recent horrific sight we saw was Afghanistan and the death of 13 Americans on that week that they left Afghanistan. But last Friday, I went to Colin Powell's funeral. 
Colin Powell was a Vietnam vet. He and Alma were close friends of mine and John's for 40 years. I thought Colin would never die. It was just, I didn't think John would die, but Colin was this rock. It's just, and he was a Vietnam vet. He and his friend Dick Armitage said they became friends because they were two people that didn't like what they saw happen in the Vietnam War. Colin did two tours. They always knew what that flag stood for. And on this Veterans Day, Colin always, as long as I knew him, had 13 rules of life. And I, I would encourage everybody to read them. They're very good and inspiring. But on this Veterans Day, in honor of Colin, I'm asking people that one of them was to practice a little act of kindness. And sometimes we don't know just being, well, he also would tell people to be optimistic. You don't know how optimism can also change the direction. But you know, I look at so many of our veterans who have worked so hard and served their country. We have moral obligations to them, I might also add, to make sure that we are taking care of them. They have access to health care. Downriver Vets is working so hard because we've got so many veterans that are homeless and so many that are still suffering the traumatic stress of what they saw and where they served. And you know, I'm very honest to say we treated the Vietnam vets like shit. And I shouldn't say it, but I'm getting more honest in my, I'm not old, but like you guys, I'm seasoned. And um, we need to be there for you. But we also need to, that little act of kindness can make all the difference in somebody's day. You know, this past 18 months has been hard for everybody. The isolation, the aloneness, that helping hand to just know somebody cares and makes a difference. And on this Veterans Day, I want to thank all of you who knew what that flag stood for and that you fought to keep all of us free. And we cannot take those freedoms for granted anymore either. But I ask you to maybe think about that one little act of kindness for someone whose day or week or life you might even turn around because of it. And to remember on this Veterans Day as we look at the flag, I hate labels. I'm sick of labels. I am one thing. I am an American. I'm proud to be an American. Living in a country that is one country, united under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and thank you for your support. Thank you, Congresswoman. And once again, for Debbie Dingle, if we could hear her. Make it part for Representative Bob with some great female leadership. And so I'm going to go directly up to our, our state rep, Carol Clemente. Carol, can I have say a few words? And thank you all for being here. Every time I step up to this podium, I am so honored to represent the city and the veterans that came from our city and from all over the world. They made a sacrifice, and I guess all I can say is thank you. Thank you. Sincerely, thank you. I have family members that have served. Curator of the museum, Jeff Day, for putting this event on. Well, behind the scenes, make sure that everything goes well, and we, we appreciate that greatly. And the Down River Marine Corps Week Attachment Number 153. 
um, new to Lincoln Park, or soon to be coming to Lincoln Park, and we look forward to uh, what's going to happen with the future relationships that we'll have with them. And thank you all for being here, being here today, and thank you for the in the back. I'm going to show our appreciation for that. All right. Now we have um, several dignitaries from the city here. We have our Council President Salcido. I saw him before. There he is. Uh, we have a group of people of um, Dupree, uh, Councilman Kelsey. Manager, Mr. Yeah. I really meant that uh, Deputy Chief of Police, Scott Lavis, and um, we mentioned small acts of, of kindness here. The, the exchange club, the, the President Chuck Persinger, who is, who is here, put uh, the field of 50 flags last night to, uh, to honor this occasion. Let's see. Oh, and lastly, the Lincoln Park High School um, it comes down to uh, it's not trades. Agri-science. Agri-science. Well, the work that they did for the bricks around the bell and for this. If you would have stopped by here yesterday afternoon, after this was not late yesterday, they did uh, just a fabulous job for us. I don't know. I think they work pretty cheap, too. We have another guest. And this honored guest, you may have seen him. I call him Class A. Is he a sort of fruity dress uniform? Is it Class A? Or is it Dress Blue? Dress Blue. I, I, I apologize. But our gentleman is 100 years old and is a, uh, a veteran of World War II. And if you look at his, his uh, medals that he has on his chest, it, it shows a storied career. But the Lincoln Park resident, and we have Edward Gazelle. I think we can do better than that. way with the ringing of the bell. And, uh, I don't know of another community that, that does that. Um, I don't know how long we've been doing it, Jeff. It's about, about 10 years. So it's probably when the Goodell bell came in. But I think there's no other way like that. You, you announce who you're ringing the bell for, and that name is uh, the one you thank them, and it reminds everybody else of what, what, they, put, what they went through. And I think um, that is really all that I have to say. So I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for uh, this. Thank you all for being here. Fortunate to have uh, the weather as much as it is.
so I just wanted to uh, briefly uh, share a few remarks, including from the uh, proclamation, the official presidential proclamation that recognizes Veterans Day. This is issued each year, and it usually covers about three or four pages of uh, proclamation text, so I've edited it down uh, to make it a bit shorter. Proclamation on National Veterans and Military Families Month, which actually the entire month of November is now uh, reserved for honoring our veterans and their families. America has the greatest armed forces in the history of the world. To those who serve and those who serve alongside them, their families and caregivers, we owe a debt we can never fully repay. During National Veterans and Military Families Month, we recognize and thank them for their indispensable contributions and immeasurable sacrifices in support of our national security. As we approach this season of Thanksgiving, we send our gratitude to millions of active service members, to our veterans and military families, to caregivers and to survivors who have served and continue to serve our nation. We as a nation have a sacred obligation to properly equip and prepare our troops when we send them into harm's way, and to support them and their families both while they are deployed and when they return home. As poet John Milton wrote, they also serve who only stand and wait. We understand the feelings of pride, uncertainty, and fear when a loved one is deployed. Every morning you wake up and say that extra prayer for them. To these soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, guardians, and coast guardsmen, and their families are simply the best America has to offer. And supporting military families is a national security imperative. At Veterans Day, we express our appreciation to our service members and veterans for their selfless sacrifice on behalf of the nation. We honor them and their invaluable contributions. We share their pride in our armed forces, and we will never forget what they and their loved ones do for our country. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim November 21st, International Veterans Military Families Month, and call upon the people of the United States to honor veterans and military families with appropriate ceremonies and activities. We have a tradition, yes. Before we start our tradition, I'd like to thank the very people that we're here for today. So if we have uh, veterans of the armed forces in the crowd, if you could please raise your hands. Traditionally, we close the ceremony with our time with our bell ringing. Do it, Goodell School Bell. Anybody here attend Goodell School? Goodell School Bell family right here. Oh, okay. That's just as good. I know we have several Goodell families. Yeah, it's wonderful to see them all here. And so this, this is the bell that, that hung at Goodell School. Uh, from 1918 until the building was raised in 1976. And then it was saved, luckily, for Chuck Higgins, um, who had been a long time school board member. And Chuck made sure that it came here to the museum eventually. So we have had it for many years now. And this tower here was erected in 1999, just before we started a new millennium uh, to celebrate. And so we, uh, each year, we now come out and hold two ceremonies uh, during the year. We have a memorial ceremony in May and in November for our veterans. Day. Uh, so what we'd like to do it now, if I can invite Rob. And we're going to start inviting 
all of you, think any guests who would like to come up and ring the bell in honor of a veteran, somebody who's currently served. Can we get all the Goodell family here first? Jim. The ground rules. The ground rules are to let Robert do most of the ringing. <laughs>
we can get a motor engineer down at Fort Union. You know, Fort Union down for us. Yeah, of course. I'm looking for a man back us. I work for his dad and uh, he was in, in the Army, he was in the Battle of the Bulge. And his brother who had a crush on him in 7th grade, he, he was, he was, uh, Oh wow, well this is still proud, but okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they, they do well to keep the fish fat.